Hi, welcome to the channel. In my review of Finity Photo for the Mac, I mentioned that I was impressed by its breadth of capabilities, bringing both Lightroom and Photoshop functionality under one app at a great price. One feature I didn't mention though was that Affinity Photo also includes a panorama stitching function at no extra cost. But how well does it work? Well, we'll find out in today's video. But maybe you're asking, why use photo stitching software at all? After all, doesn't the iPhone already provide automatic panorama stitching for free? Well, the iPhone's built-in panorama has two disadvantages. Number one, limited quality. The iPhone's camera will always struggle in high dynamic range or low light scenes. As you can see from this example, images are noisy and exhibit less detail in shadows and highlights. Number two, there's a limit to the size of your image. The height of the image is limited to 4 megapixels, which is the Y resolution of the image in portrait orientation. In my case, I usually prefer a higher resolution where I overlap three images vertically and three images horizontally in a grid pattern to form close to a 4 over 3 ratio. It just looks better and fits better on a computer display. So let's stitch a few photos with Affinity Photo and see how it performs. To create a new panorama with Affinity Photo is really really simple. All you need to do is go to File and then New Panorama and just look for your files. Okay, so this is a lot of images. There are 13 JPEGs. So all you need to do is just select them and then just click Stitch Panorama and that goes for that. So you see it takes a few seconds to actually uh, render the panorama and these are just JPEGs. Admittedly, these are a lot of images but it does take a lot of computer resources uh, to get this done. Alright, so looks like the process is done. Let's click OK to this and there you go. Okay, so as you can see Affinity Photo has done a great job of stitching the panorama. Now, I did help out Affinity Photo by making sure my exposures is set to manual so they would be consistent throughout the photo. But Affinity Photo, as you can see, there are certain parts here which are darker than others. So it's Affinity Photo's job to actually um, correct this and make these exposures look the same. Okay, so that it won't appear like there are like blocks of, of uh, edges in the photo. So you can see that's what it's doing when it's rendering the panorama. Okay, so the reason I took so many photos was this scene, this is actually a mall. It's very hard to take because my distance to the mall is not that far. So I would need a really wide angle lens to take this entire scene and that itself will not, will not look great. Okay, it won't have a lot of detail um, just like this. Okay, so you can see here that this actually ran out of memory. So I need to quit some application. So that's one disadvantage when you are uh, doing panoramas with a lot of images. It does take a lot of computer resources. So as you can see, the nice thing about this is this is a lot of images, but um, it looks really nice. I like the resolution of this, right? And so what you once you have this, you see how nicely now the, um, the rendering of the image uh, done by Affinity Photo. So it makes it really smooth and even throughout the photo. Okay, so you can just crop this image now. Okay, so let's just crop this a little bit here. Okay, so normally I don't want something which is too wide so that it will fit nicely on a, on a computer monitor. Okay, so maybe I'll just do something like this. Okay, so I don't want to waste any part of the image. Yeah, okay, so let's put a little bit here and there to capture as much of the, the width as possible. Okay, so there you have it. Looks nice. Uh, this was taken, by the way, with uh, an A7S, uh, 24 to 70 millimeters. Uh, once you're done with this, you can actually click apply here. So once you've clicked apply, you're out of the panorama mode and now you're at the main interface of Affinity Photo. And so what I'm going to do is just try to get rid of some of these whites here. Okay, so I'm just going to use the in painting brush tool to get rid of those whites. Just make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, so maybe I just put something here. You can just move over that. Just let them get rid of that. Okay, and then this one here as well. See how nice the Affinity Photo works and how fast it works really is one of the fastest performers all right so there you have it so a lot of detail and resolution let's actually look at how big this image is now the a7s is only a 12 megapixel camera so imagine the kind of memory requirements if each pixel was around 24 megapixels but the resulting image here is still pretty large it's around 45 megapixels as you zoom in you can see the resolution here is extremely good you can really get a sense of, of the place Right? And there's a bunch of reasons why panoramas really let you feel like you're on the scene better than any other 
type of photography. And one of these things is the resolution that you get. Another advantage of panoramas is um, you're gonna have a lot of data. So to correct the image, you have a little bit more leeway in the editing process because you just have a lot, so much more pixels to work with. So after a bit of color correction, this is the final image. And so I would just brighten it up a bit, enhanced it with some uh, editing software. And you can see how nicely that looks. You zoom it at any angle, uh, it's the clearest day. Zoom it at 100%. You can see all the details in the scene. It gives you really that experience of uh, being at the place. Let the viewer experience what you actually saw when you were there. So that's our first image. So let's try another one. Okay, so this one here, let's just add this. Okay, so this one here has 10 images in it. Okay, so again, same thing, just click stitch panorama. So this panorama is a little bit unusual because this is more of a portrait. Okay, so there it is. So you can see that this one is indoors. It's a little bit harder to take because you have to keep the subject still. But you can see and also there's a lot of blocky exposure differences here. Even though I did set it at manual exposure and manual focus. Um, but Alfini Photo is going to try to correct all of these. So you might say, why take a panorama for this type of image? Well, the reason here is first, I wanted to take this portrait with the bokeh and uh, my, my particular camera which is the 24 to 70 f4 would only have the bokeh if you zoomed in and it was at f4 okay so if i zoomed in this is the kind of image i'm gonna get it's nice but obviously you wouldn't know what's in the background you see that because the lens is zoomed in i get more background blur out of that lens zooming in also gives that a nice features in the face i'm seated right across the table in this cafe so there's no way i can capture the rest of the scene Okay, so this is a, a scenario where panorama would be perfect, but you have to be really careful because if you set focus to auto, you would have blurred spots in the wrong places. Okay, and it would be very uneven. So this is a situation where you really need uh, manual focus, right? And focus properly on the subject. And of course, you also have to make sure your subject is still and you have to take the photos really fast because things in the background can be moving around. Okay, so it's a little bit harder but I think it almost did it well. You notice that because I was a little bit in a hurry, I left a gap here and it's probably either because maybe people in the background were actually moving around and it could have confused the stitching software or it's just I didn't overlap it enough. But anyway, it has enough information. So let's just work with this. So what I'm gonna do here is just um, crop this first. Uh, so let's just crop whatever we can crop here. I hope you can see that it has a better view than the single image you can see a little bit of the environment especially if that's important to you in a particular shot we didn't let the camera hinder us we allow computational photography to help us in this case let me try again crop this thing in. okay and we'll keep some of the white spaces some of these are unavoidable again we'll just click apply here to go to the standard mode and we're going to go to the in painting brush again just to erase all of this white okay let's just try that again okay so here i'm just going to paint over that that's the ink painting brush tool and there you go so we're gonna color correct this a bit and okay so that's the final result so i think overall affinity photos stitching software works really well and it's really easy to use well i hope you found this video helpful so if you did smash that like button and subscribe to the channel until the next video happy shooting